This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. All right, so welcome to another video brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at factorization and we start by looking at the definition. We say that factorization is the process of factorizing an expression or number, right? So to factorize a number or expression, we want to write it as a product of its factors. So we need to define what we mean by a factor. So we say that a factor is a number which, when divided into its multiple, there is no remainder. All right, so example, let's take the number four. When you look at the number four, we see clearly that one is a factor, two is a factor, and four itself is a factor. And the reason they are all factors is that when we divide four by the number one, it's equal to four and there's no remainder. When we divide the number four by the number two, we end up with the number two and there's no remainder. And when we divide the number four by four, we end up with one and we also see that the remainder is zero there. So if we were to factorize the number four, right, we want to write four as a product of its factors, meaning we can say that four is equal to two times two or four is equal to four times one. Likewise, we could say it's one multiplied by four. And when we look at the number four and other numbers, we realize that there are many ways for factorizing that said number. Moving right along. So when we are factorizing expressions, it's important to know that there are four types of factorizations. We have number one, the HCF, also called the highest common factor. Number two, we have grouping, which is performing the HCF two times. We also have factorizing by the method of the quadratic equation. And number four, factorizing by difference of two squares. In this video, we will be looking at the first two. And in the subsequent video, we'll be looking at the other two, number three and four. So let's get right into factorizing by the HCF, which is also called the IS common factor. And We'll take on this topic by looking at examples. So for my first example, we have 2x plus 2y, which is equal to 2 multiplied by x plus y. And we want to remember the definition of factorizing, okay? So we are trying to take the expression and rewrite it as a product of its factor. So here we have 2 being a factor and x plus y being a factor. Moving right along to Example two, we have 64a squared minus 8a, right? And that is the same as 8a multiplied by 8a minus one. So it's very important to watch out for our squared numbers. Here we have 64, which is a square of eight. So we know that eight goes into 64 eight times. Example number three, 25x minus 10 is the same as five multiplied by 5x minus two. For example, number four, we have negative 49p squared plus 7p. And let's pause right here to make a note. And it's important that we recognize that if the expression begins with a negative number, we want to factor out a negative term or a negative factor. So for this example, we recognize that negative 7p is common in both terms. And by factoring out negative 7p, we end up with minus 49p squared plus 7p equals negative 7p times 7p minus 1. For example, number 5, we have negative 64x minus 16. And we want to note that sometimes you can take multiple steps to get to the answer when factorizing expressions. It doesn't have to be in one step. So here we can recognize that negative 8 is common in both terms. If we factor out negative 8, we end up with negative 8 times 8x minus 2, which is the same as negative 8 times 2 times 4x minus 1, the same as negative 16 times 4x minus 1. So if we were to recognize that 64 divided by 16 is equal to 4, we could have done this question in one step. For question number six, we have 5xw plus 10wy minus 15wz. And when we look at these three terms, we recognize that the common factor here 
is 5w. If we factor out 5w, we end up with 5w times x plus 2y minus 3z. So moving on to our second version of factorization. This one is called factorization by grouping, which is basically performing the HCF twice. And we'll take this on by looking at a couple examples. So example number one, we have px plus py plus qx plus qy. It's important for us to look at the first two terms separately from the second two terms. So in the first two terms, we see that p is common, so we can factor out p from the first two terms. And from the second two terms, we can factor out q. This gives us p times x plus y plus q times x plus y. And looking at that new expression, we realize x plus y is common. So if we factor out x plus y, we end up with x plus y times p plus q. Example number two, we have 3ax minus 6ay plus bx minus 2by. And if you look at the first two terms, we realize 3a is common. And in the second two terms, we have b being common. So when we factor out 3a from the first two terms, we end up with 3a times x minus 2y. Factoring out b from the second two terms, we end up with b times x minus 2y and now observing this expression we realize that x minus 2y is common so we can factor out x minus 2y leaving us with x minus 2y multiplied by 3a plus b example number three we have 4px minus 4py minus 3qx plus 3qy observing the first two terms we realize 4p is common so we factor out 4p, leaving us with 4p times x minus y. And in the second two terms, we have negative 3q being common. Don't forget when we have a negative, we can factor out the negative. Okay, so this leaves us with negative 3q times x minus y. After factoring out the negative 3q, the signs inside the bracket will change. So this leaves us with uh, x minus y times 4p minus 3q. Example number four, we have mx plus nx minus my minus ny. Observing the first two terms, we realize that x is common, so we factor out x, giving us x times m plus n, and in the second two terms, we have a negative y, so factoring out negative y gives us y times m plus n, Thus, if we look at that expression, we realize m plus n is common. And if we factor out m plus n, we end up with m plus n times x minus y. For example, number five, this one is actually halfway finished. We just need to look at this expression and recognize what is common and factor out what is common. So we have lm times 5x minus 1 plus 3pq times Five x minus one. Observing the expression, we realize five x minus one is common in both terms, and so factoring out five x minus one gives us five x minus one times lm plus three pq, and that gives us our final answer. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.